Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good vibe. Welcome to this episode of Chill Art, creative mindful tools to help you chill out. This program is a go-to for when you need to calm the anxious, overstimulated mind. It's stress reduction with an arty twist. In this episode, author, integrative therapist, and anthropologist Melinda Joy Miller will be teaching us about labyrinths and guiding us in a finger walk meditation with this powerful ancient tool. After, we'll be transferring a labyrinth template to watercolor paper, then color washing and inking our own labyrinth to use in meditation. No artistic talent is required. So, let's begin. Uh, there's so many questions that people might have about labyrinths, so I think she's going to be covering the basics, and it's really exciting because uh, it's a wonderful tool for mindfulness and meditation. So my name is Melinda Joy Miller, and I'm an author of Shamanic Gardening, and Shamanic Gardening is Gardening with the Heart. So I've been interested, I have a, a in company called Shambhala Institute, spelled with two L's. And it, we put that together, my daughter and I, because we are, been, are, we're really experts in environment, whether it's in your house or out on the property or in the land in a park, to bring a sense of harmony a sense of joy, and to, to really, and, you know, inspire compassion and wisdom. So we've been doing this since 1991. But before that, I studied color and all matter of energy workshops. And so now we bring what we do together from psychology, from shaman studies. I studied with two indigenous women, one for 10 years and one for nine years. The uh, grandmother, Twyla Heard Nish, it was a Seneca elder, and I always honor her. And I dedicate this little talk today to grandmother because she had sparkling eyes and a big heart, and she taught the medicine wheel of truth, which the Shambhala labyrinths fit inside the, lab, the circle. So basically, there are two different kinds of labyrinths. There's the classical seven path labyrinth, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, the oldest indigenous labyrinth. It's, the, it's from the, uh, as I said, all over the world. And then we have the medieval, Chartres Labyrinth, and Chartres is the church just outside of Paris, probably part of Paris now because Paris has grown so much. And the labyrinth, though, to really, and then, and then there's mazes, and people always say, is this a maze? Well, a maze takes you into its center, and the labyrinth takes you into your center. And that's really the difference. And I like the indigenous seven path labyrinth because it's very easy, very uncomplicated, very simple form, a form, the oldest form on earth called the circle. It's the most powerful. Circles are everywhere. And so through thousands and thousands of years, Human beings have been taking something from the earth and putting it down on the ground so they can use. And, and so the labyrinth has been all over the world. It's been in very sacred spiritual spaces. They've been, I had a little while, I'll tell you, they put them in, in cave paintings. I mean, it began, that's where people saw them. And so labyrinths have been used for many, many years. But a labyrinth, if you think of a, a labyrinth, it's okay, it's a circle. But once you put it on the ground, it becomes 
a sacred space. A sacred space that you can meet yourself. Get your thoughts together. And it's very safe. It's very safe to, it's not like a maze where you can get lost. No, this is something that you get unconfused and unlost even using it. And where you can just be, you can listen, you can see within, you can hear, you can turn your senses on. It's certainly a place to be mindful. And it brings personal insight into anything that you're doing when you're walking, because it does, once you walk this classical seven path labyrinth, you actually, there's a response. There's an actual central nervous system brain tactile response. And one of them is it turns on your brain. So your left brain and your right brain are working together. So walking the labyrinth, you can just be, you know, you can be calmed, de-stressed in a time when it's very stressed. Sometimes I walk mine two or three times a day. I have mine in my lanai. But it's really a place to feel connected, not only to yourself, but if you walk it in the early morning, you're connected to everything in the circle of life on the earth. It's a place, of course, to pray and meditate and certainly to be healed in just small ways. Access to your intuition. You could access your creativity. If you have a, if you have a problem, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to teach you how to walk with your finger, <laughs> a finger labyrinth. So when you walk, whether it's with your finger or an actual walk, you're going to experience something. And I use it all the time of what shall I, to get some answers to my questions. I, when I was asked to do this little talk, I walked the labyrinth. Well, what do you want us, me to say about the labyrinth? So it's, I asked myself, I asked my tree next door and, or my, in my backyard. You know, it's like everything in nature surrounds us and it's wonderful to get some insight from everything because everything that grows on the earth has a gift now sometimes people as human beings you know we love to look and see what it looks like and what it reminds us of and the labyrinth really does remind you when you see it on the ground it reminds you of a brain the left side and the right side and so I did therapy for sensory integration therapy. And it was, you know, working with pe people that their senses didn't work too well. And so I, I actually used a labyrinth. And before we did therapy, we would walk the labyrinth. And I, they couldn't do it at some of them because they were autistic. But that I would take their finger, and these were children, so I, I would take their finger and we would walk the labyrinth and that would calm them down so that they could attend to therapy with me. So the benefits, I'm actually now doing more research and we could use a lot more research than we have, but the circulation and stability of the blood is something that happens when you walk the labyrinth. When I walk the labyrinth, sometimes I'm, um, you know, you get up and you have too many things to do. You're kind of overwhelmed. And I'll just go walk the labyrinth and it'll just calm me down and put me in a great spot. So it actually opens up your circulation. It activates the pituitary and the pineal gland. And that's a really big one because that puts your hormones in balance, especially for us women, <laughs> that our hormones are not always in balance. And it harmonizes, as I said before, and that's what I used in sensory integration work. I wanted the right, right brain and the left brain talking to each other and working together with each other. And so that's what I used. And when I left there, I worked there 10 years. And then when I, when I left there, I continued to learn about the labyrinth. 
And the other thing that is really good for school children is that, or anybody really, um, is that it helps you to zero in and focus your attention and to concentrate, to, to really uh, work with whatever you're doing in the best way that you can because it opens the sensory systems. Now I wanna tell you about this one here. We had a class down in Kissimmee and this man, this gentleman is, um, used to be an engineer and he got Alzheimer's. And his wife just brought him because she knew me and she wanted to learn about the labyrinth. And so she brought her husband and she, you know, she parked him on a chair near the, where we were working and putting the labyrinth in. And he came over and he helped us. He started measuring. He started measuring. I have these uh, templates. And he started measuring for the labyrinth, the path of the labyrinth, and to put it down. And he, he was talking. And I didn't really notice anything different he was talking his wife said he hadn't talked for two years and when we when the class was over he actually they made a labyrinth in their backyard and he was he was really his his uh some of his brain power was coming back and his wife was so so overjoyed she was just amazed as all of us were so now we're going to walk a labyrinth. Is everybody ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you have to put the labyrinth up. You see it has seven paths on the right and seven paths on the left. And then as the Japanese say, you don't always have a center in the center. You have it a little off center. So the labyrinth is a little center. So if you want to pull your, lab, pull your cursor to the center, there you go. Thank you. So um, now that is the center. So when you, we walk this labyrinth, we're gonna walk through the labyrinth, going to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, and don't walk it yet, don't walk it yet. And then we're gonna end up in the center, and then we'll stay there for a minute, and then we're going to turn and walk out of the labyrinth. And that's what makes this very, very simple because it's a simple path into the center and it's a simple path out of the center. And when, you, when you're meditating you, and, and really focusing on yourself, you don't wanna be so much focused on where's my feet and where am I going and how am I gonna stay on the path? You don't really want to do that. You wanna just, I walk my labyrinth, I don't even think about it. My feet know exactly how to walk it. So, now I want you to, when, before you walk a, a labyrinth, I like um, to just take a deep breath. So we'll take a couple deep breaths in and a couple deep breaths out, a couple deep breaths in and a couple deep breaths out. And now think of something, whatever it is you're thinking about. Ask yourself a question. Or you maybe just want to say, what's going to happen to me when I'm in the labyrinth? <laughs> you can ask a simple question. Or maybe there's just something, uh, like, I, like I said, if, um, when, I, when I'm asked to do anything, to give a class, a talk, or you know, whatever it is I'm doing, I always walk the labyrinth and I always ask, what shall I do? Is there something that I'd like to bring up? So... Think about whatever that issue is. It could be simple. It could be complex for you. So then when you're walking into the labyrinth, you kind of think about that. And just think about it and all the pieces that you maybe want to get the solution to something. And you want to think of all the different pieces of it. And then when you get to the center, you just let it blow away in the wind. And then you just let it go and then when you're when you're ready you just take a few deep breaths in there in the center and then when you're ready we're going to turn 
and we're going to walk out of the labyrinth. And when you're walking out of the labyrinth, you'll get some ideas, some words might come to you. You'll just get ideas and you sometimes you'll get the perfect solution that you've never even thought of. When you walk out of the labyrinth, you turn and look at the labyrinth again and just say thank you. And be sure to say thank you for yourself and your great beauty and power and wisdom. And that's it. So now let's go. Are you ready? ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. You're going to walk in at the entrance and then you're just going to stay on the path. Think about what you want to think about, what you've been thinking about for a week. How do I do that? What shall I do? Be sure to take some deep breaths. What is it that you want to know? Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now we're almost to the center. Take a deep breath. And there we are in the center. So take another deep breath in. Close your eyes for a minute and just be one with yourself and everything around you. And now just let the gentle breezes or a stiff wind, whatever you want, to just blow your thoughts away into the sky into Father Sky. Take another deep breath in and a deep breath out. Okay, now we're gonna walk out. Now listen and hear Whatever it is. Take some deep breaths. listening and hearing and sensing. And now turn, we'll just stop for a moment, close your eyes and just take stock of the whole experience. Think about whatever you were thinking about. And now whatever you heard, 
whatever you sense, whatever you saw, felt. Now take another deep breath in. And take a moment and give thanks for yourself. Your wisdom, your power, and all of your love. Thank you. Thank you. That felt beautiful. Did you get insights while finger walking the labyrinth? Well, let's stay in that lovely, calm state of mind while we create this episode's art project. We will be color washing a piece of watercolor paper and using a labyrinth template. The template is downloadable from our website, leesbergarts.com backslash chill art. It's located in the supply section of episode two. If you can print the template, do so. And if you can't, all you need to do is bring it up on a computer monitor and lightly trace it with a pencil onto a piece of paper. Then turn the paper over, rub graphite or your pencil lead over the back of the paper, and place it graphite side down on your watercolor paper. Using a ballpoint pen or a hard pencil, trace it again to transfer the image. It's that simple. Now, choose your colors. You can use liquid watercolor, watercolor pencils, or cake watercolor. Just choose five, maybe six colors that bring you peace. Thin them out with water, and you may want to moisten your paper first so that the colors flow more easily. I've taped my watercolor paper down to a plastic cutting board so that the paper doesn't warp. It also makes it easy to transport it to a sunny place to dry. Once the paper is dry, use a permanent marker to embellish the labyrinth. Here's an example using a black Sharpie pen and some permanent metallic markers. If you begin making marks at the entrance to the labyrinth, you get to experience walking the labyrinth once again. Stay quiet, stay focused, and breathe. Make sure you photograph your creations and email them to us through lcfa.buzz at gmail.com. Then check our website and share it with friends. That's it. Until next time, relax, breathe, and take some quiet time. Because you're worth it.